Welcome back to Beyond Belief, the channel where we explore the mysterious and unexplained corners of our world. Today we journey through Indiana's most chilling locations. Number 10. The Nicholson House Tucked away in the suburbs of Indianapolis, the Nicholson Rand House is an intriguing old place. For over a century, no one had any idea it was haunted. The house narrowly escaped demolition in 1997 and made it onto the National Register of Historic Places in 2003. But its spooky tales started way before it was saved. The house began its life in 1870 and took six years to build. It's a Gothic Revival-style home, originally serving as a private residence for DePaul University. Later, it became the property of the Rand family, who were well known in Indiana. It wasn't until the house was moved in 1997 that people started whispering about ghosts. A photographer snapped a picture of the house during the move and many believed it showed a ghost peeking out from an upstairs window. This photo sparked all sorts of ghost stories. Some folks thought the ghost was a young girl who had died in an accident near the house, while others believed it was the spirit of a woman. One former resident claimed the house had been a boarding house at one point and a tenant had hanged themselves in an upstairs room. There's no proof of this but it's one of the more popular theories about the ghostly image in the window. The Nicholson Rand house is known for some pretty creepy stuff. People say the walls bleed, there's a stench of decaying flesh, and screams echo through the halls. All these tales just add to the house's haunted reputation. One particularly creepy story suggests the house was a stop on the Underground Railroad. Legend has it, a group of runaway slaves were hiding in the basement when a fire broke out, and they all died. To avoid trouble, the family supposedly sealed off the basement, trapping the spirits inside. Today, the Nicholson Rand House stands as a reminder of all the spooky events that have supposedly happened there. While it's now preserved as a historic place, its ghostly stories still capture the imagination of those who hear them. Number 9. The University Notre Dame Established in the mid-1800s, the University of Notre Dame quickly became known for its formidable presence in football, academics, and, intriguingly, hauntings. The legendary Fighting Irish emerged from this storied institution, renowned for its achievements both on and off the field. Yet, with a history as rich and old as Notre Dame's, there are bound to be some darkened mysteries. Notre Dame has seen its share of sorrow and tragedy. Several recorded and confirmed deaths have occurred on campus. And there's even a cemetery where priests, faculty, and other residents are laid to rest. This cemetery is reputed to be a hotbed of paranormal activity, but it's not the most haunted spot on campus. That title goes to Washington Hall. Built in 1881, which is believed to harbor the most spirits, Washington Hall is home to at least three known ghosts, each thought to be the spirit of someone who lived and died on campus. These are not just baseless rumors, but are connected to confirmed historical figures. One spirit is that of a worker who tragically fell from the roof during the building's construction. Another is said to be a student professor named Jim Minavi, who died in 1919. Minavi is reputed to enjoy playing his French horn in the middle of the night, much to the chagrin of the living. The most famous ghost at Notre Dame is George Gipp, an all-American football star who died of pneumonia in 1920 during his senior year. His restless spirit is said to still linger around the campus. While Washington Hall is the most notorious, other parts of the campus are also believed to be haunted. The main building, which stands tall and proud, has a history of its own. It's the third building of its kind on the same location, with the first two having burned down under mysterious circumstances. The sources of these fires remain unknown, but the current main building seems to be standing strong, for now. Number 8. Hannah House Built in 1858 by Alexander Hanna, the 24-room home served as a safe haven for enslaved runaways along the Underground Railroad. Legend has it that Hannah would hide these desperate souls in the cellar of his home, located on the 240-acre property he purchased on the south side of Indianapolis. Hannah, a longtime bachelor, eventually married Elizabeth Jackson, and they had one child who was tragically stillborn. Their lives were marked by personal sorrow, but the most haunting tale linked to the house involves the runaways hidden in the cellar. One night, an oil lamp was accidentally tipped over, sparking a fire that killed the group of enslaved individuals. Fearing exposure, Hannah buried their bodies in the cellar, forever binding their spirits to the house. The paranormal disturbances at Hannah House began in the 1960s. Visitors have reported smelling burning flesh in the cellar and seeing apparitions of the enslaved runaways who perished in the fire. There are also sightings of a man in a suit believed to be Alexander Hanna walking through the house. Additionally, a woman thought to be Elizabeth Hanna has been seen near a window cradling the stillborn child she lost. Alexander Hanna passed away in his 80s without any heirs, and in 1899 the house was purchased by German immigrant Roman Ehler. The Ohler family still owns the property today preserving its haunted legacy and the stories of the spirits that linger within its walls. 
The Hannah House is not just a historic landmark, but also a magnet for those fascinated by the paranormal. If you're enjoying this haunted tour, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. It helps so much. We've got more haunted tales ahead, and you won't want to miss a single one. If you have a state you'd like us to cover, drop it in the comment section below. Number 7. The Haunted Avon Bridge Off County Road 625 East, about half a mile south of US 36, stands the Avon Bridge built in 1906. Originally constructed for the Big Four Railroad, the bridge's construction is shrouded in dark tales of tragedy and ghostly hauntings. The building of the Avon Bridge wasn't without its mishaps. One particularly chilling rumor tells of a man who fell into the cement during construction and was buried alive. The cost of removing his body was deemed too high, so it remained entombed in the concrete. It's said that his restless spirit haunts the bridge, with some people claiming to hear his screams and cries at night. But the man in the cement isn't the only tragic tale associated with the bridge. According to a plaque on the bridge, four men fell to their deaths into the creek below during construction. Locals report hearing the eerie sounds of thuds and splashes in the creek at night, only to find the water calm and undisturbed upon inspection. Perhaps the most haunting story is that of a young mother who tragically lost her life while trying to save her sick baby. The woman carrying her infant attempted to cross the bridge to reach a doctor. Tragically, she slipped and fell from the bridge, killing both herself and her baby. Visitors to the bridge have reported hearing a woman screaming and a baby crying late at night. The screams are so distressing that some locals honk their horns when driving under the bridge, hoping to drown out the ghostly cries. While there's no definitive proof that any of these stories are true, they have become ingrained in local lore. Number 6. Whispers Estate Built in 1899 by Dr. John Gibbons and his wife Jessie, this house has long been reputed as one of Indiana's most haunted locations. Dr. Gibbons used the house as his office, conducting surgeries on the first floor. The Gibbonses were known for their generosity, often adopting and caring for orphaned and troubled children. According to local legend, one of these children, a 10-year-old named Rachel, started a fire in the front parlor. Tragically, she was badly burned and died two days later. It is said that Rachel's spirit has never left the house, and she continues to haunt it to this day. The house has seen other untimely deaths as well. An infant named Elizabeth died under mysterious circumstances, and Jesse Gibbons succumbed to pneumonia in the same room. Over the years, other occupants have also met their end within the house, including a person who died in an upstairs bathroom, and a young boy who fell down the front stairs. Whispers Estate is a house familiar with grief, and it seems that sorrow lingers in every corner. Many strange happenings have been reported at Whispers Estate over the years. Visitors often experience unexplained touches, see apparitions, and hear disembodied voices crying and even the labored gasps of Jessie Gibbons as she choked out her final breaths. Number 5. Slippery Noodle Inn The building that now houses the Slippery Noodle Inn was constructed in 1850, originally intended to be an upscale roadhouse and bar for travelers. However, its journey through history has been marked by salaciousness, controversy, and dark events. Originally called Tremont House, the building has undergone several name and ownership changes over the years. It quickly became a hotspot for criminals and ne'er-do-wells, turning into a virtually lawless establishment. Over the centuries, it has served many purposes. A hotel, a brothel, a speakeasy, and a refuge from the law. It even bears the marks of historical shootouts, with bullet holes and shotgun blasts in the walls, allegedly left by John Dillinger himself. Many people have lived and died here, and some of those souls are said to still haunt the premises. Whispers about hauntings at the Slippery Noodle have been circulating for decades. Eerie, otherworldly encounters are so frequent and consistent that the employees at the Inn and Blues Bar can identify the ghosts by name. One such spirit is believed to be a former caretaker named George. Known for his overalls, George is often seen trying to maintain the property, particularly in the basement. His sudden appearances have terrified unsuspecting keg delivery drivers with at least one swearing never to return after an encounter with George. This ghostly figure is only one of many said to roam the building. Other spectral inhabitants include the spirits of sex workers who met violent ends, alleged slaves who sought refuge while escaping north to freedom, and a cowboy rumored to have been stabbed to death in a dispute over a lady of the night. The ghostly activity is so entrenched that it's almost a part of the inn's daily operations. Bartenders at the Slippery Noodle are well versed in the hauntings. A conversation with them will take you on a journey through the bar's frightening past where the dead coexist with the living. Recently, the passing of a beloved longtime owner added another spirit to the mix. This owner was a guiding light who turned the bar into one of the world's best blues venues. His spirit is now believed to be part of the spectral community at the inn. Number 4. Central State Hospital 
Opening its doors in 1848, this psychiatric treatment hospital once served as a comprehensive facility for mentally ill patients, including the criminally insane. The sprawling complex featured numerous buildings, including two castle-like structures known as the Seven Gables, along with meticulously maintained gardens, fountains, and landscaping aimed at providing a serene environment for its patients. In its prime, the hospital was a beacon of psychiatric care, but by 1994, it closed down due to a combination of exorbitant operational costs and disturbing allegations of patient abuse. The state of Indiana reclaimed the property, converting parts of it into the Indiana Medical History Museum, IMHM, and repurposing other sections. The western edge of the property along Tibbs Avenue, near the old Pathology Building, served as the final resting place for many patients' remains. Today, while some buildings still stand on the vacant grounds, they are enveloped in eerie silence. Despite the IMHM's denials of any paranormal activity, numerous reports and personal accounts suggest otherwise. In the basement of the old powerhouse, where workers once descended twice nightly to shovel ashes, the sounds of a screaming woman have been reported. Shadows are said to move independently between the cement posts, and the boiler is known to turn on and off by itself. The pathology building is where deceased patients were examined to understand their mental illnesses and is notorious for unexplained noises emanating from its basement when no one is around. In the dormitories, maintenance workers have often heard cries and screams echoing through the dormitories. Sightings include a tall, ominous black figure lurking in the shadows and little girls dressed in black, running and disappearing mysteriously. A former hospital worker recounted chilling experiences, including investigating untraceable noises in the tunnels which were once home to patients chained to rock walls in earlier years. The pathology building housed dismembered brains in jars, rusted surgical tools and saws, remnants of the hospital's grim past. The insane and dangerous were housed in the bar building, while the Evans building contained medium-risk patients, the worker recalled. The facility was home to dangerous individuals with bizarre behaviors. You never knew what you were going to see from one shift to the next she explained. Incidents included dispersing patients engaged in inappropriate activities, subduing combative or suicidal individuals, and dealing with residents smearing feces on themselves, walls, or throwing it at others. Many patients committed and forgotten died without thorough investigations into their deaths. Number 3. Allison Mansion On the grounds of Marion University in Indianapolis, the James Allison Mansion is more than just a historical landmark. It's a hub of eerie ghost stories that have spooked indie natives for decades. James Allison, a prominent Indianapolis figure and a founder of the Indianapolis Speedway and Allison Engineering Company, now a division of Rolls-Royce, had the mansion built between 1911 and 1914. This stately home, now listed on the National Register of Historic Places, was where Allison enjoyed his success until his untimely death from pneumonia at the age of 56. The mansion was eventually sold to what is now Marion University but many believe that Allison's spirit never truly left. Visitors and staff often claim that James Allison's ghost continues to roam the halls of his beloved mansion. He is said to rearrange books in the library and move furniture to his liking, maintaining his influence over the house even in death. However, it is the ghost of a little girl that truly chills the spine. According to legend, a young girl tragically drowned in the mansion's basement pool. Her spirit is rumored to still linger in the mansion, with visitors reporting sightings of her ghost and hearing her shrill screams and heartbreaking cries emanating from the basement. Voices are also said to echo from the attic, adding to the mansion's haunted reputation. Despite its haunted reputation, the Allison Mansion remains perfectly restored, its beauty almost eerie in its perfection. The paranormal activities reported by workers and visitors, while not violent, are nonetheless unsettling, weaving a narrative of lost souls and lingering spirits. Number 2. The Willard Library the Willard Library, a private donation library established in 1881, serves the city of Evansville, Indiana. It is renowned not only for its extensive collection of local archives and genealogical materials, but also for the presence of a ghostly figure known as the Grey Lady. Willard Library was created to fulfill the terms of a private trust, and has since become a treasure trove of local history and genealogical information. The library's most famous feature, however, is not its books, but its resident ghost. The Grey Lady is believed to be the spirit of Louise Carpenter, the daughter of Willard Carpenter. When Willard Carpenter passed away, he left the library as a public institution, which led to a bitter dispute. Louise Carpenter, convinced that the library should have been hers, sued the library board in the 1890s. She claimed that her father was not of sound mind when he wrote his last will and testament. Unfortunately for Louise, she lost the case. Legend has it that her spirit now haunts the library as an act of revenge, 
The first reported sighting of the Grey Lady occurred in 1937. A library custodian encountered the spectral figure in the basement, an experience so unsettling that he quit his job shortly afterward. Since then, numerous visitors and staff have reported strange occurrences, often accompanied by the scent of perfume and unexplained noises. In an effort to capture evidence of the Grey Lady, the library installed webcams in 1999. Today there are six webcams positioned throughout the building, streaming live footage in hopes of spotting the elusive spirit. The presence of these webcams has only fueled the fascination with the library's haunted reputation. I'll put the link in the description below. Number 1. The Story Inn In the scenic town of Nashville, Indiana, the Story Inn has intrigued visitors since its establishment in 1851. Despite its reputation for having one inconvenient location, this charming inn has managed to captivate and mystify those who venture to its secluded setting. Once a bustling economic hub, the town of Story thrived until the Great Depression brought its success to a halt. Now the Story Inn stands alone in relative isolation, which only adds to its enigmatic allure. The inn itself is a picturesque place, with rooms named rather than numbered, fostering an intimate and unique atmosphere. For over a century, the Story Inn has been more than just a quaint retreat. It's become a hotspot for the supernatural. Each room in the inn is equipped with a guest book, specifically for guests to document any strange or spooky experiences. These guest books are frequently filled with tales of ghostly encounters and mysterious happenings, necessitating regular replacement. Once filled, these books are stored in the attic, preserving the accounts of countless visitors. The most renowned ghost at the Story Inn is the Blue Lady, believed to be the wife of Dr. George Story after whom the town was named. She is so frequently encountered that the room she prefers, originally called the Garden Room, has been renamed the Blue Lady Room. Described as having brilliantly blue eyes, the Blue Lady appears to guests even without the aid of the little blue light beside the bed in her room, though turning it on is said to increase the chances of a sighting. She is often accompanied by the scent of cherry tobacco, a favorite of hers in life, and sometimes leaves small blue-colored gifts for guests. In addition to the Blue Lady's appearances, the Story Inn is home to other, more typical paranormal activities. Visitors report lights turning on and off by themselves, objects moving inexplicably, cold spots, and the eerie sound of disembodied whispers and voices. The Story Inn's rich history and frequent ghostly encounters make it a unique destination for those interested in the supernatural. Thanks for joining us on this ghostly journey through Indiana. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos from Beyond Belief. It helps out a lot. Thank you to all of our subscribers. Until next time, guys, keep exploring the unexplained.